Hello, a warm welcome to you from the SGT University. I am Dr. Swati Bang, working under the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today, we will be exploring about the osteology of tibia. Skeleton of leg is basically formed by two bones a medial bone tibia and a lateral bone fibula tibia being more massive as compared to the fibula helps in greater amount of weight transmission also tibia is a preaxial bone of lower limb and corresponds to the radius of the upper limb it is also called as a shin bone like any other typical long bone, it has an upper end, an intervening shaft and a lower end. The upper end articulates with the femur to form knee joint, whereas the lower end articulates with the talus to form the ankle joint. Let's study the anatomical position and site determination of tibia. The upper end of tibia is expanded side to side and have two projections which hangs from the posterior surface. Whereas the lower end of tibia is compressed, narrow and there is an elongated projection on to the medial side, this is called medial malleolus. So whenever we try to identify the side of a tibia, we have to make sure that the upper end should be the expanded end, whereas the lower end should be the narrow end and the medial malleolus has to be capped medially. The other points of identification includes on to the upper end, anteriorly there is a tuberosity this is called tibial tuberosity this has to be capped anteriorly whereas the anterior border of the tibia is also sharp and that also has to be capped anterior so when we hold tibia it should be held vertical with the upper end expanded lower end should be the lower end with the medial malleolus sharp anterior border and the tibial tuberosity facing anteriorly. So here in my hand is a left tibia. Let's start with the discussion of each part individually. First, we'll be discussing about the upper end of tibia. Let's study the medial condyle first. Medial condyle is larger as compared to the lateral condyle. Also, it is oval in shape. Its long axis is antero-posteriorly. It has a center part which is concave or slightly depressed, which directly articulates with the femoral condyle whereas the periphery of medial condyle is flattened and is separated from the femoral condyle by the help of meniscus. This is how the femoral condyle articulates with the tibial condyle to form knee joint. When we show the attachment of meniscus, meniscus are the C-shaped disc of fibrocartilage which separates the tibia from the femur. The medial condyle of tibia has an anterior surface, this one 
a medial surface and a posterior surface when we talk about the anterior and the medial surface there are lots of vascular foramina whereas when we talk about the posterior surface there is a groove on the posterior surface this groove lodges the tendon of semimembranous muscle semimembranous muscle is a hamstring group of muscle of back of thigh originating from the ischial tuberosity and getting inserted over the groove on posterior surface of medial condyle of tibia also the margins of medial condyle gives attachment to the capsular ligament of knee joint but these margins hang down anteriorly towards the tibial tuberosity the medial on to the medial side there is a tubercle called medial intercondylar tubercle this tubercle is covered or raised by the lateral surface of medial condyle so this was all about the medial condyle let's discuss the lateral condyle now the lateral condyle hangs more as compared to the medial condyle see here you can see that the medial condyle is in line with the shaft but the lateral condyle is overhanging from the line of the shaft so the lateral condyle hangs more laterally and posteriorly same as the medial condyle lateral condyle also articulates with the femoral condyle to form the knee joint the articular surface of lateral condyle is circular in shape and same as medial condyle it has a central depressed part which articulates directly with the femoral condyle and a flat peripheral part which is separated from the femoral condyle by the help of a fibrocartilaginous lateral meniscus the lateral condyle also has anterior surface a lateral surface a posterior surface and a medial surface the medial surface is raised to cover the lateral intercondylar tubercle on to the margins of lateral condyle there is the attachment of capsular ligament of knee joint but this capsular ligament is deficient posteriorly for the passage of tendon of popliteus so the tendon of popliteus is intracapsular but extrasynovial also on to the anterior surface there is a facet this facet is called jerdy's tubercle and this provide insertion to the iliotibial tract when we look on to the posterior lateral aspect there is another facet and this facet gives articulation to the fibula to form the superior tibio fibular joint like this whereas the margins of this facet gives attachment to the capsular ligament of superior tibio fibular joint so now we'll be discussing how the joint is formed
like this a knee joint is formed this is a femur tibia and patella the central part of both the tibial condyles only the articular surface of femur articulates the peripheral parts are clearly separated by the meniscus this was all about the lateral meniscus and the lateral condyle of tibia the next part of the upper and is the intercondylar area intercondylar area is that area of the upper and which lies in between the two condyles of tibia this intercondylar area is widened anteriorly as well as posteriorly but it is narrow from the middle part and this narrow middle part is slightly elevated to form the intercondylar eminence and this intercondylar eminence is flanked on both the sides by a medial intercondylar tubercle and a lateral intercondylar tubercle the attachments over the upper part of tibia especially the intercondylar area are of great importance there are certain ligaments and the meniscus attachments over the anterior as well as the posterior intercondylar parts and we learn them in sequence from anterior to posterior and we have a mnemonic for that the mnemonic is from anterior to posterior it is medical college lucknow and lucknow medical college let's understand this mnemonic in anterior intercondylar area there will be the attachment of anterior horns of both the meniscus whereas in the posterior intercondylar area there will be the attachments of posterior horns of both the menisci anteriorly first is medical college lucknow m for the anterior horn of medial meniscus then c college it is the anterior cruciate ligament and l for lucknow and that is the lateral meniscus anterior horn so from anterior to posterior there is anterior horn of medial meniscus anterior cruciate ligament and the anterior horn of lateral meniscus and when we talk about the posterior relation anteriorly we had medical college lucknow posteriorly we have lucknow medical college first is l lucknow for the posterior horn of lateral meniscus then college the posterior horn of medial meniscus and lastly will be the posterior cruciate ligament so post on posterior intercondylar area we have posterior horn for lateral meniscus posterior horn for medial meniscus and the posterior cruciate ligaments these ligaments lie in the same relationship onto the intercondylar area so this was all about the intercondylar area the last part of upper and is the tibial tuberosity tibial tuberosity marks the anterior limit of intercondylar area it is a subcutaneous structure which can be palpated when we touch the skin just below our knee joint this tibial tuberosity is divided into two parts the upper smooth part and the lower rough part the upper smooth part gives attachment to the ligamentum patelli whereas the lower rough part gives attachment or here lies the subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa which separates this tuberosity from the skin the inflammation of this subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa 
is called clergyman bursitis. So this was all about the tibial tuberosity and hence the upper end. So today we learn about the upper end of the tibia along with its site determination and anatomical position. And the next time we meet, we'll be exploring about the shaft and the lower end of tibia along with its ossification. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.